Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. There have been a few changes since last week's episode, uh, namely names and faces. So previously I was shoddy, I'll now be going by Brendan, here with who was Burris, is now Luke. Hi. And previously unknown to you, uh, Jonathan. How's it going? So Jonathan is, uh, much like Luke and I are, a cousin of Autistic. ours. Autistic. But well. what's unique about Jonathan bit. is he is a construct we fabricated specifically for this podcast, thinking we needed a third member. So he is a golem made of clay and twine, and we're eager to see how his personality develops. Also known as a normie. <laughs> sure, <laughs> he's a normie. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been a bit <laughs> since the last one. It's been a whole eight days True. instead of the usual seven. True, and <laughs> True that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, business as usual isn't really going to happen because we're, we're going to be finding our footing and we've, we've got a new member. Uh, and it's also been a while since we talked, so we'll probably just take a bit to kind of discuss with each other and catch up and that will also serve to introduce us but uh, before we get into that uh important to note that we are uh, sponsored today by totino's pizza rolls and sadness yeah sure i'm sponsored by sadness <laughs> so uh yeah so jonathan you are the only one of us in school now mm -hmm. and are you are you going for computer science is that right i am okay. yeah yeah, technically computer science engineering, but mm -hmm. I think it's you know, that's what that's thing. what I went for as well. Who are you going to yeah. design processors? <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't even taken like an actual computer uh, engineer course yet, just because um, yes. I needed chemistry. And when I transferred, like uh, I was in school out in California, right? And so when I transferred back to Ohio, they were like, "Oh, you haven't taken chemistry?" I was like, "Why the fuck do I need chemistry <laughs> for a computer science class?" Welcome to Ohio. Yeah, Luke, did you? Uh... Did you go for CSE or something tangential? I think, I think I originally went in for something like that, but as uh, as time progressed, I was like, yeah, maybe I'll go for like writing or something. That would be kind of cool. And then I just completely <clears throat> lost all like bearing because I was like, well, I kind of want to do everything, mm. but at the same time, nothing. Yeah. So, there you are. And then I was just like, yeah, screw it. Total domination. Yeah, we it's are. Uh... Basically, yeah. Neither of us finished school, so Jonathan might be the first one to, you know. Oh, no, don't put that pressure on me. Cross that bridge. I mean, I did, I did like, <laughs> go to California to be an actor, so I mean. You did. You did. Yeah. Chances of me finishing school. I mean. You do whatever you put your mind to. Oh, thanks, Dad. Luke, did you just, like, did you just drop out because you didn't give a fuck? Um, no, it was more like anything that I wanted to do didn't require a college degree anyway, so. I got you. I, uh, it was partially I wasn't going to class so much anymore, and partially I ran out of money, and I didn't feel like taking a big-ass loan. Same. That's to, the exact same thing. To when it came school. down to it, um, you know, the first year I was able to fund myself, mm -hmm. and after that I think, um, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to take out a loan for like 60k on something that might not even pan out, like, like yeah. I'd rather, uh, get a house or something. Mm -hmm. And then I got a job, so I was like, "Who the fuck it?" Yeah, same. You got a nice job too. I did get a nice job. I got a nice job that I'm now being fired from. That's Are okay. you actually getting fired, or is it yeah, so it's like... considered fired? But yes. Yeah, they gave me five it's months. It's more of notice, just like a laid off, which is crazy. But yeah, they uh... see. It sounds more. It sounds more like you're just like it's less of like you did a bad job, and it's more oh like no, yeah, no, position no. isn't. It's yeah. because uh, I'm a contractor. I'm not. I'm not a full-time yeah. employee there, and they want to get rid of contractors and bring on full-time employees. It's whatever. I knew it was going to happen eventually, because they fire contractors every, like, three to six months. Um, Did you last longer than most? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been here for... By the time I'm gone, it'll have been a little over three years. So, it's been it's been a while. Yeah. But yeah, so we... Uh, yeah, Luke and I used to do this, because... Um, it was a long-standing tradition that every, I, I guess it was mostly New Year's, uh, when we would go to our grandmother's house, we would... Oh god, New Year's? We, we would, Luke and I would be in the same room, and so after the ball dropped, pretty quickly everyone would go to bed, and then Luke and I would stay up until 
like four in the morning watching dumb videos and just talking about shit. And so when we Where's moved, yeah, when we yeah. Uh, when we moved, this sort of became uh, a thing we did in in replacement of that, and we dropped it for various reasons of just being busy with work and stuff and it not working out so well. <clears throat> and now we're starting again, hopefully weekly, and we brought Jonathan on, uh, because he was always kicked out of the room by Grandma. So after <laughs> yeah, after true. years of being outside, he gets to see the inside. Wow. Yep. We Is were too unholy. Uh, oh, Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Why'd she kick Trevor out, though? I, I never understood it, that. It was, I think it was just an age just thing. Just, Actually, you know, yeah, it, it might have been was a, literally. It, it might have been every... Luke's corrupting influence, and she figured I was too far gone, uh, and gave up on me. <laughs> And abandoned no, me. I think it came down to it was like, all right, um, she just like put everyone in pairs. I don't know, it was weird. She did. She well, well our whole, our whole family kind of did. Well, Chelsea, Christine, and Brooke we were like born in pairs. We're all a unit. <clears throat> but to be fair, we were born in <laughs> a lot of us were born in uh, opposite gendered pairs. Yeah. 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 So that, Except for that didn't Jonathan. really pan out. I, <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah Jonathan and Trevor aren't opposite gendered, and Chelsea doesn't have a pair on this side of the family. There's always time to pick your gender, though, Jonathan. <laughs> or convince Trevor if you really want to. Yeah. Try. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, for reference, we are all cousins on the same side of the family, different uh, familial units. What's immediate families? Is that what it's called? Um, I suppose. Uh, well, I mean, if we're cousins, then we're not in the yeah, same that's true. family. Well, so we could we could all be cousins, <laughs> but not each be a cousin. Like, you two could be brothers, and we would all be cousins. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. That's like, we are all brothers, but not half-brothers. Or, like, yes. you could be cousins with both of us, but us not be cousins right. ourselves. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. Uh, the, the people we reference are, are other cousins. <laughs> Just to help you be slightly less lost. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like we went a little bit too, yeah, too in depth. We did. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not. Yeah. We're not far enough along we'll, for the family lore yet. We'll have to like edit some like family tree. <laughs> um. So yeah, have it be like uh, I don't know if you have the uh, the book for Game of Thrones that has like the history of all the families of the different um, great houses, but literally just make one. I'm gonna be honest. Good. I'm not gonna put in that much effort. <laughs> Very well. I understand. Speaking of family, uh, Game of Thrones, uh, do you guys watch that show? Yeah, we do. Well, not anymore. It's over. Well, yeah, Nobody yeah, watches exactly. it anymore. But, <laughs> but everybody but, like was um, super mad. We about can it. talk about the ending. I feel like it's still uh, slightly topical. So I actually haven't um, seen it. But so I, don't mind I so much read it. leaks. Uh, so I I already knew what was going to happen. So I mean I discredited the leaks or kept them in mind, yeah, and then, then after like one episode or two episodes, it's like oh okay. Um, yeah. The ending was interesting. <laughs> My problem isn't that the ending, like, that I, that I, a lot of people are upset because they didn't like the way things ended up. And it's not necessarily that that pisses me off. It's the fact that uh, you can tell that the plot is very much, and I, I heard this on a podcast, uh, reverse engineered, which is to say, um, they they found out like all right this is what happens in the book oh so yeah, yeah, yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna like make you know six episodes as quickly as we can to just basically do exactly the same um exactly the same story endings but we're like we we had none of the payoff with none of the work to get there yeah yeah and that's what really bothered me uh and the what. What really makes me angry is, so episode three came out. It's the Night King episode. Uh, I won't go into further detail, but um, people were very upset from that episode. While in the meantime, I'm sitting here like, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought um, it was very artful. I thought it was good. I think a lot of people were upset because they had really crappy TVs too. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> the thing that bothered me is I defended that episode and I said like Game of Thrones they still know what they're doing don't worry about it and then the next episode hit and the next episode was absolutely terrible 
So this actually, uh, this actually goes into something you said you wanted to talk about. How jazzed are you that the showrunners are taking over Star Wars? Uh, extremely less jazzed. <laughs> I mean, than I had previously been. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I don't care because the last Star Wars entries have not interested me whatsoever. No. All right. So, so let's rank those last uh, three Star Wars entries. Uh, Wait, which ones are those? Yeah, yeah. So that would be um, Force Rogue Awakens, one. Rogue One. Well, no, 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 no. I really liked Force Awakens, and I, I think like anyone Awakens. who says so Force Awakens oh, so you're you're throwing is... Solo in then? Yeah, no, no. So Solo... Solo was dog shit. Solo was bad. So here's the thing. I avoided Solo because right. I didn't care. Every time I try to watch Solo, me and my girlfriend sit down, and we fall asleep. <laughs> Every time, within like, you're probably better first... off to be honest. And I mean, within the first couple minutes, it's, I don't know what it is. I just can't watch that show. Now, for all I know, it could be pretty good. Mm. I don't know. I keep falling asleep within the first five, ten minutes. It's the not. Three or four times we tried to watch it. Um, episode eight, to me, was blasphemous. Like, yeah, it was... the ending of Game of Thrones, it, it made me dislike the series more as a whole, yes. But it didn't make me hate the series. It didn't make me, like despise like what why you know what, what about I mean? it specifically was like so um like blasphemous i so think luke's it's actually very similar it's 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 very very similar the reasons why i don't like where episode eight ended up it's how you got there it's the the choices that the characters made that didn't make any sense so you're telling me that in the last 30 years uh luke skywalker just turned in yeah the way they treated to... luke was really bad yeah, and I mean, he just, they just made him a hermit to kind of fit with the artistic vision of the previous episodes, how there had been a hermit that guided uh, the character. That's just how it's always been. Do you think you that, that's like the, why they made him a hermit? Yes, absolutely. Um, another thing that like, so this isn't really a story problem so much as it is just why the fuck. Uh, so Carrie Fisher died. And they have this scene where she should have died. Leia, I mean. Should have mm -hmm. died. Oh, with the, And the, instead yeah. she has Mary Poppins bullshit <laughs> and lives. You know, here's the thing about that is, like, I actually really like that she, like, could use the Force. I hated the way that they made her use the Force, though. Like, I was, yes, been, exactly. I was fine with like, the idea that she was Force-sensitive, but when she, like, actually, like, Force spacewalked, I was like, she clearly, like, hasn't had the Force prior right. to this. Yeah. she was just sensitive I mean, to it that's the thing it's like they kind of had shown that she was sensitive to it so it would have been nice if instead of showing like a mastery of the force and like surviving the fucking vacuum of space instead she used the force in a in a much smaller way like that maybe had some build to it so that it was actually a payoff rather than just kind of like oh look at look at this oh know? look and, she could use the force all along and never did and and she's like perfect at it it's like i don't know man like it yeah, just no, it was little... terrible let's let's yeah. just say it for what it is it was terrible and it betrayed what star wars was um it, it was so close the, to being cool the fact that you had to and and this brings me back to uh ray which initially um and this was in like the episode before there's a bunch of alt-right people who are saying like oh she's a mary sue and in case you don't know what a mary sue is a mary sue is a uh, character a female character obviously who's good at um, everything is it always good at everything for no reason um like, no mary sue like... can be used for uh, for males as well i've heard it used for males yeah. okay so mary sue is a character that is good at everything end of discussion just good at yeah. everything and when it comes to like training it doesn't matter she's instantly good that's the end of it like really good the best um and with episode seven i was like well here's the reasons why you're wrong you see she could be luke's kid or she could be uh i was about to say keanu reeves for some reason. <laughs> but uh uh kylo ren's um keanu reeves this guy is a kind of <laughs> but anyway she could have been kylo ren's um uh i don't know obviously cousin or yeah. i mean well uh, if she sister. was luke's kid she would have been kylo ren's cousin yeah i know but <laughs> like sister etc um 
Yeah, I mean they they and didn't that do explained. Oh well, she her. has really high midi chlorian count. That's why. So it would make sense that she would have this ability to be so force sensitive because that's basically what happened with uh, Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker before him. Yeah. So that made sense. Um. So when that happened, I was like, oh, okay. Later on in that same exact movie, um, I had like a rationalization of like, all right, well, maybe she's not Luke's kid. But, um, Snoke could be Darth Plagueis. Yeah. And with that knowledge, it's possible that Rey is Darth Plagueis's kid the same way that Anakin is Darth Plagueis's kid. Yeah. Well, we were, uh, we saw TFA together and I was, I, I, that was what I thought that Snoke was Plagueis. Exactly. And I thought at, at the very least, this is either Luke's kid or it's Plagueis's like backup plan. Hmm. Right? So, we had this, you know... I mean, here's the thing. We, we all had this idea, like, oh, this is probably how it's going to turn out. And when things don't turn out the way that you plan, or the way that you think they do, um, I'm fine with that. I think that's just fine. I have no problem with the idea that, like, oh, things didn't go to plan. Or things didn't go the way they were, like, foreshadowed. I don't care. But the way we got there was just disrespectful to the show or to the to the series as a whole hmm. and the fact that every time that you thought like all right cool they're like because it seemed like kind of throughout the entire show that or movie that they were saying like all right well you know star wars is going to change there's going to be more gray jedi there's going to be you know instead of light and dark side now we're gonna have like multiple different sides and you can be like a good guy but with like bad traits you know and i was like oh that's cool um the fact that like they're they're possibly gonna change all this and then nothing happened hmm. and by the end of the movie we're back to how we were initially yeah nothing changed the movie was pointless it served no purpose well that's, that's my big problem with rogue one which i mean it's difficult to do a prequel where you know the ending that has a point but like the characters really? never developed. I actually really liked Rogue One. The characters had no development. All That's they served true. was the, to the just die. Didn't have, the characters did not have any development. But I don't think you necessarily even need character development to make a good story. My big issue... Um, you know, it, it wasn't like a great story because there wasn't any development, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. So I mean, there's, I it's a problem it. of there's no character development and there's no plot development because we already know the start and finish. So what is the point of the movie? Um, if I don't care about the characters and I already know the plot, what's it doing? I actually kind of like the characters, though. I'd have to like watch it again to give a better like explanation of my thoughts. But uh, I don't know. Like, uh, fuck, I can't even remember it. But I remember. You can't remember it. Yeah, that's sort of a <laughs> staple suppose. of shit characters. Yeah, I, I happen to agree. It was it. Let, let's let's just. It's not the same as it was. It's not. There's no thought put into any of the plot whatsoever. I don't know. It, and it it's pretty clear to me that they're more interested. And again, there's nothing wrong with having uh, a message in your movie, but they're more interested in giving this message than they are making a good story in the first place mm -hmm. so uh, that's uh, that's that's what i think and it's not that i disagree with the message it's that i think the execution is horrible uh yeah i don't i don't i, I don't think it was a very good movie but we we talked a lot about star wars and we probably don't need to talk about more star wars no <laughs> no, it's just gonna make me more upset. Um, oh, but uh, we should really talk about the uh, the trailer. The trailer? Yeah, oh, the trailer. you mean where she the like does one. a she does a flip and then what ends. about what about the emperor's laugh? Okay, here's the thing. Them bringing the emperor back makes it cheapens the entire experience as well. I agree. I it agree. also makes it worse that Snoke wasn't Plagueis. Because they're like, yeah, we'll bring back this fuck. But not. That's that's my big problem. Is like, there's Plagueis. really no main well, also antagonist. Means the death, and we already, you know, Star Wars already had, like, death didn't really matter because... Well, death didn't matter for the good spirit. guys. 
Yeah, because you could become a force spirit. But now, like, death literally doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, we can always just be like, yeah, they died, but they're back now. The end. Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> um, another thing I want to discuss is... Have you guys changed at all in, in how you sort of experience games? Like, I, I can give an example of what I mean, what I was thinking about, just to make it clear, but I, I sort of meant it generally. But, so one thing I thought about today, because I've been replaying Dead Space, um, is that I tend to go for harder difficulties now than I used to. I, I would normally just play on normal, and I would still do collectibles, that hasn't changed. And another thing is, I used to be really bad about, like, reading tutorials and learning the game's mechanics before I played. I would just sort of dive in. Uh, so I noticed with Dead Space <clears throat> that I'm way better with ammo now. Because I remembered back to my first playthrough for a good chunk of it, I didn't know you could uh, rotate the plasma cutter. So I was being very inefficient with my shots. In God of War is another game. Uh, I didn't know God of War 1 had a blocking mechanic until God of War 2. <laughs> when I read the tutorial for God of War 2 and learned about it. Okay, uh, so here's, here's my experience. I see where you're going from. Mine is completely the, mo the inverse of that. Like, I play on easier difficulties now. Um, I tend to look at things way less than I used to. Mm. Um, Story-wise, I, I tend to skip over stories where you used to never do that. Oh, I, I still don't skip over stories. I can't believe you skip over stories. Uh, occasionally, it depends on the story. <laughs> but, Does it depend uh, on the game? Like, if oh, the yeah. gameplay is what you're I've been to playing play? Shadow of War, and I've just been like, the, the first couple I was like, oh, this is interesting, oh. But as soon as, like, I don't know, they made the story too obvious, where it's like, oh, the Castamere is gonna become bad. You mean Kelly Like, Brimble? you can tell. Castamere. Sure. Uh... <laughs> Castamere, the, the, the guy. The, whoever's son, or father. The girl's father. I see. And I was like, yep, yep, that's exactly what's happening. He's making a bargain with whoever the hell. And I, you know, you could tell that from like a mile away because they were literally just talking in a tent when he walks up to them. And after that, I was just like, yeah, whatever, I don't care about the story. Um, but if something like bothers me in a story now, in a, in a game, which it seems like now they're, they're starting to make the stories more and more pedestrian. Like, just more, like, I don't know, they were already basic. It was always, in the end, usually, take Dishonored for an example of, like, a really normie story that just is like, eh, whatever. But I feel like, uh, you know, you help the good guys, the good guys in total, or one good guy betrays you, and then you gotta fight them. That's how I almost see every single story, uh, video game-wise, happening. I suppose. Hmm. So, I mean, you could boil down any story, I feel, to like to make that. it really simple. No, Not no, to no. That I mean, like to that level, exact but... same. No, no, no. I'm talking like every single video game story I've uh, uh, played in like the last couple of years have just ended up on that exact same note. What games do you usually play, though? Do you play like indie stuff or is it all just mainstream? Uh, a little bit of both. I don't know. I play whatever is like popular. I think it's like big enough that I get old about it. Then do you like I'll open usually... stories? Hmm? Do you like open stories stuff like Dark Souls where they it doesn't really tell it to you? Um, no, I don't like. Uh, I don't know. I like it. I like to be entertained, and I feel like Dark Souls for me is just kind of like. Mm. Yeah, Dark Souls is very much just about the mechanics, not really the story. Yeah, there's there's nothing going. on. I actually really like the way that the story goes. But I do to too, but I, for the for the main stay, there's not really a story. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of just like the lore. You're, you're picking stuff. up scraps and piecing it together. Yeah, that's Which true. I mean, that's exactly how like almost everything does it now. And the reason why you have these scraps is because it's it's lazy, and you don't actually have to put any effort into your story. And I guess I was also just spoiled as far as stories are concerned. Like during my era of gaming, I guess like I it was the it was the height of Bioware. And at the height of Bioware's storytelling, uh, I just feel like 
everything's worse now <laughs> because games are <laughs> that may sound really harsh but like games are specifically created to be open-ended now they're created to be like oh um like skyrim for they're, they're all modeled after a skyrim after like an open world concept where uh they can add things in later to have you pay more money for and maybe that's just like my jaded bullshittery but i remember playing speaking of jaded jade empire and being like wow this is great or any of the other Bioware games from that era. KOTOR, KOTOR 2, even though KOTOR 2 is not Bioware. What but... about the uh, single player games that came out like this year and last year? Like Spider-Man or yeah, Spider-Man was pretty bad. Good. I mean, Spider-Man was good. It was too story, easy, but it was good. The, the story was... I liked some of the things they did, but overall I felt like after about four or five hours of playing Spider-Man, I was done. Like I had no interest in playing Spider-Man anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, War it wasn't open ended. Haven't haven't gotten yeah, around to it yet, unfortunately. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I really liked. Yeah, after about four or five hours, I just gave up. on So this sounds like you just give up on games. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to like keep me involved, and it's just another like s single player open world third person. Would you uh, say that that's the games, or that that's you growing up? A little bit of both. I don't think that I just, you know, I like playing games, but the type of games that I play has really changed to be more, like, strategy-driven or multiplayer over time. And it's not that I don't like a good story. I mean, I love a very uh, well-put-together story, but I just don't want to sit here and play something that really seems half-assed. Like, I got, I got Devil May Cry 5. Beat the game. Enjoyed it. The, the story wasn't great, but it wasn't half-assed. It was a complete experience. It was a whole ass. Yeah, it was a whole ass. The and it maybe it wasn't the best ass, but that ass was whole. It was and all from the chapter one to the final chapter, you could just play it all the way through. It was it was linear the way I like my stories to be. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't, say, do this... All right, great. You got three like cow tongues. Now turn them into like shoes. Shit, dude. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I wanted to play an MMO, I'd play an MMO. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. Is I feel like, as when I was younger, I didn't like. I liked MMOs, and then as I got older, I started liking MMOs a little bit less and a little bit less. And then games all started to just copy MMOs and have all the same elements as MMOs in every game. And now that Vanilla WoW is coming out, I'm like, I'm actually interested to play Vanilla WoW. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, before we go more into this, because this is one of my topics, uh, to the original question, John, <laughs> has there been a change in how you experience games? Um, I don't know. I, I'm younger than you guys, so I mean, like, you're two years younger than us. I mean, you, you've you been guess. playing... But have you experienced so these I guess... changes, like, recently, though? Because it sounds like both of you guys have, like... This is somewhat recent. Um, but to me, I don't know. Like, I actually just got back into Minecraft, because, you know, Minecraft had seen, like, a bit of resurgence. And then, like, I decided to make a server with my friends, because it was on sale. And I, like, convinced them all to buy it for their PC. And, like, I went back to it, and, you know, it's a different game. But, like, I enjoyed it the same. I still did the same shit. I, like... When I was a kid, though, like, I couldn't really play games because, I mean, you know how my mom That's is. true. I guess you, you never played as much as us because it, not only, like, true. you, like, didn't have the consoles as well, so. And what's, right. What's unfortunate well, I wasn't actually allowed a console or anything until I was 13, and my first one was a DS, and then I played Pokemon. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I started from a really limited place, so I feel like I'm still kind of, like, exploring all the genres, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, actually kind I of like. jealous of you, of your experiences that you're going to have yeah you have it better because you can like you can just experience whatever you want you're not like limited to what is handed to you or yeah <laughs> like... and there's there's also just like a i wouldn't say like a virginity aspect of certain games <laughs> but it's true like what yeah, your first I would give, is totally different what i would give to like replay some of the games that and i don't know if you'll ever play the games that like we played growing up because a lot of them they aren't as good as we remember 
Oh, that's actually a, a that's a thing. So, uh, so one thing, uh, that's what encounter or not encounter. That's what counterattack is going to be for. But uh, to you know, sort of re-experience those things. And also, uh, Ariel and I have been showing each other games that we played as kids, like PS2 and stuff like that, um, that the other hasn't played. And so it, it lets us sort of do that retrospective of is this as good as I thought it was, and how do they enjoy it through the lens of you know, having played games for fucking however many years now. Uh, but there's also, I feel like, before I got into PC gaming, um, my quality meter was, wasn't as good as it ended up being, obviously. Just because, and this, I think, it, yeah, yeah, I, I'm past the point of a, well, when I was a teenager, I used to pirate fucking everything. Why the fuck not? I used to yeah. pirate all the games, right? So as soon as you got the ability to pirate games, I could play whatever the fuck I wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, if I heard about it, I didn't have to be like, oh, shit. Well, maybe I'll go to um, maybe I'll go to the rental place and get this video game for, like, three days and play it. And, like, maybe it was really fun, but, like, if you were to continue playing it, it would be garbage. You know? <laughs> or... You know, I didn't have to, like, make a choice between one game out of the 50 at GameStop. You know? Yeah. I could just kind of choose, like, now I can just do whatever the hell I want. Like, I can play whatever interests me. But it also, it, it comes with that, is a lot of extra responsibility. Mainly because I kind of feel like I have this huge selection of games, even on Steam now. Like, obviously, I think we both have some. Like, I have, what, over 700 games, and you have probably over 1,000 now? No, no, uh, no, no. Real quick, though, before we, like... I've got 1,700. I actually do realize a way that my gaming has changed. Okay. Like, before, it was always single-player. Like, I hated any multiplayer game, and it was partially because I didn't own, like, any of the systems, so I was always ass at the games. Like, whenever I would go over to a friend's house and play Halo or some shit. Yeah. Uh, but recently, like, multiplayer games and games that I could play with my friends, like, Borderlands, I got really into when I was out in California. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> your, uh, your first home console was, was a Wii, right? Like, not handheld? Yeah. And here's the thing, the Wii is a the Wii is an underrated piece of machinery. I thought it was fun. I mean it's, going back, like the games were simple, but they're like No, the games were not simple. Some of them, I mean it depends on what you were the games playing. I but... had. Yeah, yeah. Are you it's kidding? Definitely possible the games. Plus my mom's got me, like they were all like throw this block at some other blocks. Wow, you can use the Wii remote to throw it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it was interesting, uh, because my my parents played games and so like they had the oh, ps1 really? from when i was like an infant they had the ps1 so growing up i just had access to to playing the ps1 uh with bubble bobble Your dad and had stuff a, like that. Uh, had a sega saturn did he yeah so when when the console wars started heating up in that generation he got a saturn not a ps1 <laughs> okay I, I remember the snes that got rained on and ruined um i don't yes, i don't he, remember saturn yeah he i'm pretty sure he told me that he had a, originally had a saturn and like traded it in because he was like wow mm. like there ain't shit on this and there's like fucking everything on playstation mm. but yeah it's interesting because the the way i developed like some of my favorite games i played when i was younger it weren't my picks they were games that either my parents had or were purchased for a different member of the family like uh so the earliest puzzle game I remember playing is Myst, and I fucking loved Myst. And that is a game... Yeah, have, have you tried... What was that? Have you tried to play that lately? Yeah, I replayed it uh, a couple months ago. I It's still a great game. It's so good. Okay. I, I loved it. Uh, but yeah, so Myst was great. That was something my parents played, and I, I remember... Uh, I was very young when I played Myst, and I so I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> so I... I got stuck at some point and I looked through the notebook my parents had because Mist came with, mm -hmm. along with the guidebook, a notebook to, yep. to keep notes. Yep. I remember playing it when I was five. Yeah, and so I would, I was about that, probably about that young and got stuck uh, and looked through the notebook and my parents had a note of which person they they believed because at the end you pick a book, uh, mm -hmm. two brothers. <laughs> uh, 
And so I believed their choice and lost. Because uh, <laughs> they were wrong. Um, and another thing, Kingdom Hearts, which, like, is one of my favorite game series ever. I'm pretty sure my mother bought for Christina because she liked Disney stuff. Uh, yeah. And I ended up playing it. to get lucky. Yeah, with I, like a, I got lucky. A banger, yeah. And uh, my mother actually played it with me, but... Yeah, it was. I believe it was originally bought for Christina. Yeah, and it just ended up being an absolute banger. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. Um, yeah, mostly uh, the games that I ended up playing were uh, were because of, like a friend loaned it to me, or you know I like went over to their house and they were playing a game, and I was like, holy shit! So I remember like Grand Theft Auto Three coming out and me absolutely needing a PlayStation Two. Like as soon <laughs> as I saw that game, I was just like, oh my god. The, the whole landscape has changed, like, the future's here. Uh, my first PC game was Elder Scrolls Oblivion on that shitty that. compact that I had in my room. I remember, um... Huge monster. I remember your dad just being like, this is the, this is the best PC, and I was like, no, it's not. No, like, they here. had a better PC at the time. He might have been talking about the Dell they had. Yeah, no, no, in the, like with the Pentium D, and I'm like, I got a Core Two Duo. No, yeah, I'm like, talking, I'm talking about the computer speed. they got rid of the Dell for. The compact white, big box monitor was in my room. Mm. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> and that ran Oblivion. It did barely. <laughs> it was a fucking miracle, but it, it did run it. Um, I remember, like, I ran Oblivion. I think it like 1680 by 1050. And look, with all settings medium, I ran it, and it still kind of ran weird. Mm. And the thing about Oblivion is, it's, it's again, it's just one of these things where, like, I had played open world games before, and once you, like, play enough of them, I just have no interest to play, like, any more of them. As much as I did really? enjoy just, like, screwing around in Oblivion and adding mods and stuff. So did you not, like, uh, Skyrim them? Oh, I absolutely hated Skyrim. Skyrim was bad. Wow. Oh, for real? Yeah. Should I try Oblivion? Oblivion, I love, I, I love Oblivion. The if quests are way better. Oblivion, Oblivion. Here's the thing, though: when you look at like what Oblivion was competing against, as compared to what Skyrim was competing against, Skyrim is objectively a better game. I'm willing to put money. Mechanically, in. certainly. Uh, mechanically, I would say the story if you have, like, the and quests are worse. Yes, but that's kind of the whole point, is so that it's like an open world game, so that the story doesn't have to be as good, which is like... But even just individual quests, role. and I, I, this isn't a whole thing we should get into, because I could fucking write a treatise on Oblivion versus Skyrim. Uh... Yeah, everybody, always, everybody always shits on Skyrim's quests, though, but like, I didn't play there a were a couple that were fleshed out. You just had to find them. Like some, some of them were like, just go find them, like some, you know, Draugr in a cave. But and like, I'm not saying I like I didn't like, like the... give up on Skyrim. I've played at least a hundred hours of Skyrim. Yeah. But... Uh, also, though, like I don't know. I guess I didn't really play it for its quests. Like, it was like rich in lore, you, but you like play... each quest. No, it's in... not really. It's it's actually one of the least, most shallow lore games out there. As far as like that. like the lore didn't matter, but it was there. If you, like, got into it, if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but, I mean, like, most of it was, like, reading books. Yeah, but, I mean, I guess the way the, the reason I played it, though, it wasn't, like, to do the it quest. It was your first very it. large RPG. Like... I suppose. It, it's it's. I have a special place happen. in my heart for it. What, exactly. was the, what was the first game you, you guys, like, really got into and played a lot probably, of? Probably Minecraft. Minecraft? Not, like, Force Awakens? Because I remember you playing that a lot at Grandma's house. Force Awakens? Yeah. Or was, uh, that, she, was that she didn't Star have that Wars. did she uh, luke left so. it at grandma's uh i didn't play it at grandma's or, sorry not force awakens force uh uh the the star killer one uh no no i force didn't oh, shit. I, I know what you're that. talking about force unleashed like, i was so young i don't really like i don't know i don't really so like, what the, the game that. you're talking about is just the the star war i forget it's force star unleashed war. it's force unleashed no it's no, not no. yes it did i'm talking about force unleashed i never had that game nope then the, the one at Grandma's was just some like shitty like. Yeah, it was a shitty Star Wars. No, game. Grandma had Force know. Unleashed. We let's go to Grandma's house and fucking settle this. <laughs> it's probably still Force... there. If you want to count a Grandma, if you want to count one of Grandma's games that I got into, it would be Digimon. When I turned yeah. all of your guys' Digimon into boot monsters. You fucking. I'm <laughs> telling you, Force Force Unleashed is there, and I will it's prove not, it. Not, I literally, I will prove it next time we go to Grandma's house. I, I will fucking show you. Literally never had. Fucking what? The, what's the bet here? 
I promise you. What's the bet here? How about a copy of Force Unleashed? <laughs> no, I don't want that. <laughs> I'll give you ten bucks. Uh, another one you had that you you played quite a bit of was uh, Spider Man on your PC in your basement. Yep. Oh, you know what? That one. That one's it. That's the exact same one as the PS or PS. Uh, PS two. PS. PS one. Sorry. PS one. Yeah, I had it on PC, and I remember I loved that game. It was That's great. like why I like Spider Man so much. Yeah, Spider Man's my. I don't even my like Spider Man that much, but he's my favorite. Oh, Spider Man's. I fucking. Spider Man's like a quack. Okay. You just you just call him a quack. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> RuneScape was probably the yeah, which I remember just being pissed that you got into RuneScape. Yeah, because you kept trying to get me into WoW, but at the same time, WoW cost money. Yeah, and, it, and I wasn't gonna by do far that. and away. RuneScape is an inferior game to old school WoW, uh, but I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, but you enjoyed it because again, it was like your first MMO. No, I, I've played WoW. I still prefer RuneScape. You've literally never played WoW. I literally have played WoW. You gave me your alt account, and I played on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it was Dude, half of this life. episode has just been you guys arguing. <laughs> That's what all. That's what it always is. No. <laughs> so, listen, um, this is what I'm getting at. Okay, when you played WoW, it was like, was it Watlick? Uh, it Crusade, like I think. 30... Yeah, it was. It was a second or third expansion. I think it was Crusade. It rapidly changed, and even then, um, you had me play vanilla certain... though on your account briefly at Grandma's house. I did play vanilla. You played like, yeah, like 20 minutes of vanilla. It was at least an hour or two. But the thing is, I'm really actually very excited for Vanilla Classic just because. I've been watching someone play the beta. I, I, the, the thing is with WoW, it's just like you just sprint through to try to get to end game, and it's like, why? No, you don't. You absolutely do not. In original WoW, you're not able to do that. That's what's great about original, like, Vanilla WoW is that you can't sprint through because there's too much shit to do. And if you want to get uh, spells, you literally need to... Uh, my, my game clamp might crash here. But you... Um, you Because I fucked up my drivers. But you might... Um, you need to do quests to get skills. Like, there, there's so many things... Oh, so, that, yeah, I mean, they're still doing quests, but they're just, like, they just spam through it and fucking... Vanilla WoW doesn't place. have it on the game. Like, not really. Like, it had... It, it's, it's hard to explain, but when you compare it to what WoW eventually turned into with uh, everything just being UI-based, and they completely ruined the idea of a world, hmm. it just became of Warcraft instead of World of Warcraft. But it also stung because like you you introduced me into into War Three and like the story in War Three is really cool, and in WoW it's really not. <laughs> like, well, here's the thing, right? By the time you got into WoW, they changed the story so much retroactively that it was like, or you even got to play WoW. Yeah, the story had been retroactively changed so much that you're like, what the fuck? I, I think, yeah. I mean that that was definitely a thing. Like. Uh, oh, shit. Because I, I ended up buying WoW when I moved out here. I think it was when Cla uh, Cataclysm came out. And just like watching the opening cutscene, it was just like, what the fuck is happening in this world? No, C everything, um, I would say, like towards the end of WoW, like, which is the third expansion, hmm. all the way to now, which is like, I don't even remember if it's the sixth or seventh. But it's it's been bad. Like, and it's just been consistently worse because the things they add initially when you think about them they sound like a good idea mm -hmm. right but then when you actually get into using those ideas you realize how much it takes away from the actual gameplay and that's the biggest problem that wow has is that everything that it's added since its inception has been worse since like 1.12 which is vanilla mm -hmm. and it's not that, like, the TBC was a great expansion, but the thing added took away from the main game every single time. Mm. And then Watlick completely, like, people act like, oh, you know, Cat is when it really started getting really bad. But no, it's not true. Mm -hmm. In Wrath of the Lich King, that game just completely tanked because it used to be if you wanted to go to a dungeon, you had to walk to the fucking dungeon. Yeah. You had to walk there, and you also had to bring a party or get lucky where someone else is like, oh, we need a healer, and you're like, I'm a healer. I'll heal for you. 
you just had to get lucky. Like that that was that's the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Um now if you want to go to a dungeon, you just click a button. Say, take me to a random dungeon. And then you get like a daily reward for doing one dungeon. And it's all based around like, well, we want to give people uh money. Or we want to give people like enough that they want to continue playing. It's a Skinner box. That's that's the word I'm looking for. It's it literally has turned 100% into a Skinner box. And that's that's all I gotta say about WoW. <laughs> Jonathan, did you ever play any MMOs really? Um, no, I never really got into them. I, I never guess you, really, you like, didn't really have them. a computer that like because the computer basement wasn't hooked up to the internet, was it? No. Also, it was like actually a potato. Yeah, but that's fine. Wasn't it like I don't remember exactly it was, specs, but it was really bad. Yeah, it was. It wasn't great. Mm -hmm. So you never. But I mean, some people would classify your computer now as a potato. So really, yeah. When I built this, it wasn't you know it wasn't anything crazy, but it was like it was alright. It was the best you could get for as little amount of money as you had. That was still like passable. Yeah, I mean, you could have gotten things that were like newer technology, but Intel is notorious for not having good choices at the low end i don't know i'm happy with it it does everything i needed to do i've never played a game and been like shit i wish it was like better i still get that oh, wow this guy did you hear that guy <laughs> you gotta bring that guy see if you if you uh press tab and then you just click on their account you can bring their volume down to zero or 0 0.1 basically making them unable to uh communicate nice yeah all right so i actually I updated my drivers. I had to roll them back because there was like a bug where my computer wouldn't crash, but like my monitor would just stop working for a little bit. So yeah. I, I just unrolled it. So hopefully here I'll be able to kill some shit. By the way, maybe you guys can explain to me, like, what is the appeal of MMOs? Um, so I can answer for myself. Uh, MMOs fill something for me the same way Minecraft did. And that is just the need to be doing something repetitively that achieves something. So, like, I don't, I don't like repetition for nothing. But if it's repetition yeah. that's leading to something, my brain fucking loves it. Uh, eats so that then, shit up. Yeah, and that's that's part of the reason why I feel like as WoW has progressed, it's it's become doing something for nothing. But yeah. uh, so, but then why not just play a game like Minecraft or Factorio? That I do. Actually I has play like, all sorts of shit. Out, like end game. Uh, there was actually one time in Minecraft where, uh, so Luke messaged me on Discord, or Skype probably at the time, and he's like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I've got to dig, like, it was like 10,000 dirt or something like that. And Luke was like, what the fuck, why? And I was like, because I need this thing. He's like, no. And I was like, yeah, no, I gotta, I gotta do this. Uh, and I think he might have called me autistic as well. Uh, <laughs> That's might what... I mean, that's, like that's it. probably a fact. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. But that's just like that's particularly why why RuneScape was was better for me than WoW because it's just a grind to achieve things, and that's that's my jam. And that's why I like I trophy hunt on my PlayStation now because I, I like the just going for something in a game uh, more than just the story, you know. It's it's fun. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, like it's a game. You could achieve things that like aren't in a game. Mm, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that requires me to like develop argument? skills and talents as a person. Are you saying that you could do that outside of a game? And I could just play yeah. video games. Yeah, video games are like designed to make you feel like you're doing really good, even if you're shit. Yeah, that's that's basically how I feel. And even if you're like good at one, but then like so if you can like just if you can get past that and get over it and just be like, yeah, I'm shit, but hey. Yeah, it's, it's not like a legitimate. Um, but if you can get past that and still have fun, I think it's totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I totally just that's the whole thing. Is are you? <laughs> is it fun to achieve things when in reality you're achieving nothing? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think that that's a very <laughs> yes. dumb argument because you even say that to the real world. Like, what are you achieving in life? In the end, it's meaningless. Very little. Uh, now that I have. No, I disagree. I think I think every interaction you have. Well, I think every interaction in the game you have is meaningful just as meaningful as life i guess well if it's a multiplayer game yeah sure actually yeah, multiplayer games player. work less for me like grinding to achieve rank in a multiplayer game does nothing for me agreed 
Um... Well, here's the thing with multiplayer. It's like grinding to get... Um, it depends on the rank. Like, if it's like some prestige or some just bullshit level, like in Call of Duty, it's like, I don't really care about that. But I guess, like, placement... Yeah, this game no, is more. The this game is far more interesting as far as placement when I actually am playing and not just like fucking around. The, you hardly but, uh, half the time you're just fucking sitting. There. The furthest, oh, no, no, I didn't do anything. This game. The furthest I care about for like the ranked placements is like I, I go far enough to be like average or a bit above average. That's yeah. that's all. I, that's all I can give a shit about. It depends on the game. I mean, Hearthstone. I like the grind. But that's just because... Then, then I have to build um, a deck and compete with people that are actually buying cards. Yeah, I don't buy any cards, but I usually just go for, like... Uh, no, just... Hearthstone is, is shitty, and it's been shitty for a little bit. I mean, they really ruined Hearthstone. Really? Yeah, what, my... what expansion ruined it for you? Um, All of them. <laughs> all of them have been bad. Really? I think, a, a lot of them uh, I think it got like... really bad. I think it got really bad, and then they brought it back with uh, Journey to One Girl. Yeah, and but then the they fact lost that, it a bit, and they just brought it back with this expansion. The fact that they have just kind of modeled it after Magic the Gathering, when Magic the Gathering is objectively a better game. Now, but sure, you so can make pretty. the argument. You can make the argument that, well, Magic costs money to get into, uh, and you have to play it with actual cards, right? Because like the actual like. No, you don't think an online version. Hearthstone has yeah, the Hearthstone has the same failing though. Like, yeah. you get a couple free packs, but it is very much the same thing of, like, you just get them digitally rather than buy them. Like, yeah, I don't know. I exactly. like... Exactly. So, Magic doesn't I, feel I, that I way. Magic, when you have, like, a pretty good set... Feel good. Yeah. I have a pretty good set, and, like, I haven't spent anything. And then, like, whenever I play Magic, it's like, you have to spend so much just to have fun. No, you don't. I mean, like, no, I, you really don't. Have I you actually ever went to a Friday like... Night Magic? Have you ever what? Have you ever went to a Friday Night Magic? They have a store right down the road from where you live. Yeah, no. You uh, just like no, pay an entry fee and do a draft tournament, right? Yeah, it's uh, I think it's like fifteen or twenty. It's anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five, depending on the size of the draft. Um, which is basically like you're you're making yourself your own deck, and the cool part is is that you're making it on the fly with the cards you are given. So yeah. it's like Arena in Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where they got the idea. Like it's, Hearthstone, um, all Hearthstone did was copy Magic. It's together. basically like a bunch of people. Uh, I'm okay sit, with that though. A bunch of people like open yeah, a pack, too. take a card out, hand them left, take a card I mean, out, hand them left. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing about uh, Blizzard. You'll find out as they continue to make new games, they don't make anything original at all, and that's fine. They, they do just really, what they do. yeah. They do everything they do is really polished. So, for example, Overwatch. For Diablo three. Uh, well, Diablo three. Well, Diablo three. It was polished. It just was a turd. It's a polished turd. <laughs> it wasn't polished when it came out. Yes, it was. It, it was a polished mm, turd. That's debatable. I, I had fun, but I hadn't played it until yeah, last year. I played you a played lot. Diablo three years <laughs> after it came out. Yeah. Did they make so it, it doesn't count. Yes, <laughs> I've, I've played yeah. it. I've played it throughout its life cycle. Well, then, so, is it fair to say that you hate it if it's changed so much? No. Yes, because it hurt. Me. I'm very meh to it. <laughs> but, I just no, don't think like, it's a that, great game. Thing, yeah, when you, and when you get down to it, all all Diablo three is are instances of World of Warcraft, except there's only a few of them, and then it's over. Instances of world is that what WoW is like? Um, if you go to a dungeon, yes, that's exactly what WoW is like. Interesting. Then <clears throat> maybe I'd like WoW. I so, just thought WoW was. You uh, don't want. You don't want to open that door. No, I don't. You've got I'm a life. Actually, I'm, like, I'm going to give you. Wow. You've got a life. To no, don't do it. You can do play it. vanilla WoW. Everyone at my work is play it too. I'll probably I don't won't want... be like insane in it. I don't but at want the same you time, to. Here's the thing. Are you, do you have an addictive personality where it's like, oh, I... Have I fucking lootly. Are you kidding me? I have, I like, the opposite so of addictive personality. What does that even like, mean? That's, that's my issue. Like, I'll get into something and I'll really enjoy it. I tried heroin once and fucking hated it. <laughs> no, so listen. <laughs> well, I feel particularly I with, with games, probably your ADD... I have tried many different uh, illicit drugs, but never heroin. I'm not an idiot. I know that shit is, like, legitimately addictive. I've seen what it did to people. So that's like a no go, but like I've done LSD. It was fun. I wouldn't probably do it again. But that, that's surprising because you tried to get me to do it. You tried what? Not that. not like literally giving it to me, but like selling me on the merits of it. Well, 
I mean, that's fair enough. <laughs> this is why Grandma never let me in the room. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. If you can Google something, and you can, like, find actual, like, Mayo Clinic or, like, other links, and all of the data says this is harmless. It's harmless. Like, if literally all the data comes back, like, yeah, it was literally legalized LSD? to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Are LSD, yes, yeah. yes. So, when every single data point says this is fine, and the reason why uh, it was illegalized was for, like, a political re reason, etc., you can kind of come to a conclusion on your own that this is probably fine. I mean, I, I just it, don't like they, the things they literally, affecting my mind in general. It took me a long time to even drink. Well, here's the thing. How much do you drink now? Um, I don't know. Not, not a lot. I remember That's for a while lot. you were drinking quite a bit. I mean, I, I can drink quite a bit. But here's the thing. I don't like to get drunk, but I do like to get... You know, in the zone. Uh, I mean, I Fridays we do drunk souls, but I don't even know that I really get drunk anymore. Yeah, it's so just the name at this point. Um, my big thing is that. Uh, where do I get? This locked? podcast is gonna okay, ruin so, Jonathan's purity. Yeah. yeah so. Um. <laughs> you know, everybody so thinks anyway. I'm super pure. I mean, like, I guess I'm innocent, but it's not. You're like just I'm nice. Like, that's that's the yeah. big problem. Is that you're just a little problem? too nice. And if really? people, I don't know, it comes across, and I'm probably wrong here to an extent, you you know, but it comes across that, like, if this someone's being a dick to you, and maybe, like, at your job, That's totally know, not true. If That's someone's being a dick to you, you'd be like, okay, and you'd be, like, nice, but then you'd kind of, like, get out of the situation. See, everybody thinks that, but I'm really, like, not. Like, I'm very, uh, I don't know. Like, if something bothers me, I tell you. Well, like, I mean, I it'll definitely yeah, but, uh, affect your images of us, probably. Come again? Like, how how you see us, how you grew up seeing us, I probably isn't the most accurate image. Well, yeah. But Don't anyway, you if, if you get the opportunity to do LSD in a safe environment, because, of course, the thing about hallucinogens is that you are hallucinating, so you want someone there, what's known as like a babysitter, right? You want someone to be like, just make sure you're okay and doing all right. And like, if you need a drink of water, they'll get you water or something. And then just expect, you know, and to do the same thing for them. As a distinction. You need someone trustworthy. As a distinction, your babysitter should not be someone who has done it before and says they will be fine. It should be someone who is sober. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, that is true. Not only sober, but also you just like a compassionate a... human being. Yeah. But... I mean, like... Also, don't say you guys like I've done this. I'm just giving advice for people who will do it. <laughs> no, no, and I never claimed, like, yeah, I'll be No, no, but Jonathan just started saying you guys like I was <laughs> telling people how to properly... No, no, I'm saying you guys because, like, I was a little bit offended. Like, no shit. Like, who doesn't know that? Know what? No, there like, are definitely... You should have a compassionate person people. who's sober... Instead of some guy who's like, no, I'll be fine. There I can babysit while I'm tripping balls. Definitely, there are definitely people that don't. Yeah, I'm offended you thought that that was me. Well, to my knowledge, you don't do drugs or run in circles that do a bunch of drugs. I don't do drugs, but I do run in circles that do drugs. Surprisingly, but, they, they all seem to find me and they want me to do drugs. Well, anyway, here's the thing. Just before you put anything to your body, whether it's meat, vegetables, drugs, you should look it up and just, like, make decisions, you know, based on your own findings. And you should make sure to make sure that those findings are legitimate, of course. But that goes for literally everything that you put into your body. That, in mind. that goes for most things in general. Yeah, so... Wait, um, what the fuck is bonding? That's what I've always done for anything that I've ever consumed basically um i i mean I, I it's it's what i do for my dog it's for myself you know you yeah. shouldn't eat your dog regardless of what it's the okay. study says <laughs> no like i if all right my dog loves carrots i give my dog carrots all the fucking time you right? sure you don't have a horse now the first time i looked a rabbit <laughs> but uh the first time I looked into giving my dog a carrot, I googled that shit, 
I looked at like multiple different dog outlets because a lot of places will be like, yeah, it's really good. It detoxes your dog. And then like your dog like shits blood. Because detoxing isn't real. Detoxing Anyone is blood. Tells you. No. Detoxing is uh, what your body does now. Yeah. So. It's, it's your liver's job. Yeah. <laughs> it's why you have a liver. <laughs> yeah. So anything that claims like this is detoxifying is probably bullshit. So Unless it's throw that out. the liver. <laughs> your your liver is detoxifying, but uh, yeah. There's I don't know. Not to oust my mom, but like, I feel like I'm like I have a fairly good head on my shoulders when it comes to that sort of stuff. But like, holy shit! Like my mom believes like the craziest, stupidest that's, thing. That's most of this that's side almost, of the family. That's, yeah, oh, really? and it's almost always grandma the woman. eats up Russ's shit. Oh, yeah. She was trying to tell me on his bullshit one day, and I was like... Oh, yeah, dude, I just blocked him. Like, oh, yeah, he's blocked on my like, Facebook as well. I, I added... Like, he's uh, still on my Yeah, he's still on mine, like... too, because I didn't want anyone to see that I... Like, I didn't want anyone to see that we weren't friends and be like, why'd you delete Russ? Yeah, exactly. So, I deleted him, like, without actually deleting him, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. And... Silenced or something? So, this should yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely isn't an episode. We should <laughs> link where our families might listen to it. But but here's the thing, I don't really care, fuck it. Well, but uh, I have I don't especially care either. Jonathan like, interacts with them more than us. But here's the thing. Well, have I here's the thing. I moved to California. Do you guys think I did that just cuz like hang out with Russ? Yeah. yeah, you you moved to <laughs> Russ. Uh that was like uh there's a lot of reasons, but but anyway, yeah, Russ is on some dumb bullshit and it's funny cuz like my brother is trying to eat into and I, every time I see him, I'm like, you're wrong. Like, yeah. But okay. I don't know. When, when, you, when the science is there and you can just look it up and if it, and another thing, if you look up something like, is this this way or this way? And like the first 90 fucking hits are all like, this is this. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the, the big thing with, like, vaccines causing autism. There's, like, one study that says they do that was, that was no, by no, a man no, who lost his accreditation. The crazy thing about that one, though, is, like, because of that, like, there's so many more things that are just, like, way worse that got spouted because of that. Like, they don't even cite that anymore. They cite the things written about that yeah. that were written about Yeah, that. I mean, it all links back to that original thing but like though. nobody does the homework to go like three ways back they just go no no no. this study is a different one but it's the same like it's the same study just like a different yeah. person wrote about it yeah yeah but here's like here's the thing people can look at any sort of information and they can like kind of deduce their own opinion because right. essentially people people never in school at least in the united states were ever taught how to look at information and like they just believe, you know, correlation equals causation. I mean, that's what like, English class was supposed to be, but like some hey. suck and some people just didn't pay attention. Here's the thing. I don't think that it's really like the school. I think people are just kind of idiots. Well, no, what it is is when people were younger, of course, they didn't give as many fucks because they're a kid, right? Um, and they weren't taught like the seriousness of certain situations and certain things. Um. As adults, everyone wants to act like they're doing good, so they do what's called virtual virtue signaling. And I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's not familiar. But virtue signaling is basically when people, let's say, um, on Facebook, let's say like a man murders father, like be like because X and Y, right? And someone will post on that and be like, "I would never think about doing that. That's horrible." that person should be killed or you know something like that i think your first problem is you're on facebook <laughs> but, but just just roll with me here because okay, virtual okay. signal virtues on facebook to an extent i have literally never seen in my life anywhere else just get off facebook i haven't been on facebook since i was like 12. dude i literally if i use facebook i don't mm, like it's do not anything that impressive jonathan you're only 13. Yeah, again, you're you're literally virtue signaling right now, motherfucker. Am I? Yes, you are. That's literally no. what, like, I, oh, you, you'll be better if you stop doing this. Like, that's virtue signaling. So what I'm getting at is... Virtue signaling sounds very broad, then. 
because I'm not virtue trying to say that I have a virtue. Shame. I'm saying that um, like I'm doing this and I'm better for it. Uh, okay. But anyway, I'm not saying I'm better than you for it. I'm just saying I'm. No, gonna... I know. But this is what I'm trying to get at. I'm just trying to make a point here. I'm guessing it's lost. Like I get it. Facebook sucks. I know. Social media in general is bad for you. But what I'm trying to say is the people who are on Facebook commenting on things like that. The reason why they're virtue signaling is because they're a piece of shit. <laughs> like, people who virtue signal are giant pieces of shit. I don't know if you can... I right, here's the, I hate whenever anybody boils anybody down to, like, if they do this, they're shit. Or, like, if they do that. <laughs> like, any of this thing is, like, like, all of these people are this thing. Like, I don't know. Anytime I hear that, I'm always like, there's going to be an exception. Like, well, maybe no some... shit. There's going to be an exception for every rule. Just because one guy, like, hates Jews, right? Maybe he just had a bad experience with uh, someone who's a Jew. It's not excusable. So are you saying racism. that I'm a piece of shit? Because yeah, like, it's excusable. No, it's fine. There's an no. exception. You know, he's just... That's what I'm getting at. It's the same damn uh, thing. There is no... There's no excuse for being a virtuous signaler in 2019. Not so anymore. are you saying that I'm a piece of shit? No, I Because I just... I just virtue signal. <laughs> but... If you were to, let's say, like, something really fucks up happened. And the, and the best example of a virtue signaler who's, like, a huge piece of shit will be on something that's entirely accidental, right? So I don't know if you heard about the whole, like, mud hens thing, right? Mud hens thing? Yeah, the, the dog that died. I did not. So, unfortunately, a dog uh, at the mud hens game, there was, like, fireworks that occurred... Oh, and the dog yeah. died of I a heart hear attack. About that. I did hear about that. Well, if you go on to like any news article and read the comments, people are just like, they'll either say like, oh, that guy was such an idiot. He should have never had his dog near fireworks. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn retard. <laughs> but they'll have like that, right? <laughs> or... um. They'll be like, the mud hens should be sued for a million dollars. And this is, and like, it was an accident. Like, it was a horrible accident that occurred. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I guess I just don't pay those people any money. You don't anybody, know. Anybody like, who gets heated about any news article, I just immediately am kind of just like, I don't know. No, I, I disagree. Like, I think there's things you should definitely get extremely heated about. And the fact that people don't kind of like bothers me. And then, for most things, it, it pisses me off when they get upset about, like, nothing. Well, that's kind of what I mean. But... Yeah, and especially when it's, like, a personal issue, like, you know, someone with, like, a mental health issue had, you know, had, like, a breakdown and killed someone or something, right? Um, like, let's say they're, uh, I don't know, like, one of their kids, like, killed a kid or something. That's horrible, right? Yeah. But at the same time, like... It doesn't say anything about society because they had a mental health issue that, that remained untreated. And sure, we could do better as a society to uh, treat mental health. Sure. Yes. So, but like, so it does say something about society. But it's like saying, <laughs> I agree, but the, this is what I'm trying to get at. But they try to make personally, they try to like yeah. put themselves in the shoes of like someone with a mental health issue. Well, that's also, that's the, like, so this you is... you have a fucking mental health issue. Shut the fuck up. What? No, no, not you, but, like, the people who are... <laughs> you have one. About this. It's like, you don't know what... That guy literally could have believed that that kid was, like, a monster. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I again, think you're... I think we don't... Like, it's we're not... not looking at the picture at all before we... Like, we look at a fucking... Like, we look at a news article, we see the title, and people just immediately start commenting. Before even reading the, that's well, that's my problem. A tamer version of this is uh, like like nice guys. Or it's like, oh, I would never do that. Yeah, I would treat you right. Like, does anybody think that this is right though? Like, does it even fool anybody? What? Like virtue signaling or like nice guyism? Like, I don't yes. know. All these problems that you're well, spouting I mean, just kind nice of guys, like no, very but... <laughs> shallow. Virtue vir virtue signaling. Other virtue signalers will sort of feed each other on it. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a feedback. That's like kind and of. It's white, the same though. thing with like people who are like addicted, who aren't trying to help. <laughs> like, they'll just go straight up like, meh. Well, it's not my fault because X and Y. 
what the words kid. <laughs> I can't make call on. You know, it's not my it's not my fault because of X and Y. This is a weird tangent we went down. I don't even know how we got here. But anyway, I think we we're talking about Russ and Facebook. Yeah, but it all it all stems together to the same thing of like, fuck, man, I'm not listening to shit he says. Yeah, <laughs> it's all bullshit, man. Ah, I just don't get why people even like post stuff like that. Like no nobody listens. Like. Validation. On Facebook. People want validation. It's like, yeah. You have people on your Facebook that are more likely to think the same way you do, and so you can post that and get validation. Yeah. There's got to be better ways to do it, though. Yeah, people will take whatever validation they can. Here's the thing. People who post to Facebook regularly uh, have something going on, like, wrong with them mental, and it doesn't mean that they're, like, super, like, crazy or anything, but... They're clearly like seeking. It's the same people who like post every day on Instagram, like, "Wow, look at how great I am!" And you know, I'm uh, just like, I'm uninterested in that because you're not trying to grow as a person. But that's just. I mean, let's not go there. I haven't grown as a person. Fucking... Yeah, I know. But like, <laughs> also, I don't think posting inherently means you're not growing as a person. No, he's yeah, posting like post every day. The people that are like always posting, always. Yeah, and only things I know what about you mean. like how good they are and shit like that. Like, the... I had to live around those people in California, and I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess I agree to an extent, but I. And I'm not saying like I don't like to boil it down so simply. They're not. I'm not trying to say the people who post every day about how great are bad people but okay, I, think, then like, I mean if you're doing... posting every day about how great you are you are a dickhead well yeah. again it's not necessarily but that doesn't how mean great like, you everything are. about them is... yeah it means that they're like how great my life is and how like i think that they just have something i am for x and y and because that's how my old roommate was i feel like don't get me wrong they're, they're not people who do that who like oh i'm so blessed for x and y and i have you know, the best, uh, let's say, like, girlfriend or boyfriend, and I have the best, uh, like, mom or dad. It's like, we all think that. Well. <laughs> unless, unless, Damn. you know, other issues. But, like, I'm serious. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it could be, oh, man, all I had to do was, like, stick it for another second. <clears throat> Point two seconds. Yeah. Anyway, anything else we want to discuss? Yeah. Oh, I did want to talk to you, uh, you guys, about the the comical Call of Duty circumstances that have happened. Uh, uh, I'm unaware. I've I'm only unaware. heard uh, like relative good things, which is weird. So I, I don't like super oh. hate Call of Duty. There's just two dumb things uh, that that have happened. So the the next game is uh, is coming out this fall, and it's by Infinity Ward. Uh, in case either of you don't know, uh, that there there were two companies that would work on. Yeah, so it's games. like the quote original Infinity Ward, but not oh, get the, it. Treyarch and Infinity Ward were the two that would work on games. Anyway, th this is yeah. Infinity Ward's turn, um, and their games have been mostly Modern Warfare. They also did Ghosts. They did Advanced Warfare, and now they're getting back to the Modern Warfare series. But the names they have chosen are hilarious. So their their first game was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Yep. And then they dropped the numbers and just did... Well, actually, they were originally going to drop the Call of Duty title and tried to pitch it as a separate series for Modern Warfare 2. But then they put it in the at the last second. So it doesn't have the colon. It's just Call of Duty Modern Warfare without the colon. And then Modern Warfare 3 is Call of Duty colon Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> And this past year, they remastered Call of Duty 4. But for marketing purposes, they figured they should drop the number because Call of Duty doesn't do it anymore. So it's Call of Duty colon Modern Warfare. Remastered. Wow. Yeah. And this next game is, is Call, of Call of Duty, Duty colon Modern Warfare. Warfare. Mm. That's a shit show. Like, how are so, you ever going to keep the games in? I don't feel like it's like as confusing as you're letting on. But yes, I do. It is. It's just hilarious that Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered came out and then Modern Warfare came out. That's fucking yeah, hilarious. I don't know why they would do. I mean, I guess if it's it's gonna be a completely different story, is my guess. Uh, yeah, it's like a parallel universe or something. But, but then, so the other dumb thing that happens with Call of Duty uh, pertains. There's no zombies, I hear. That's crazy. 
Well, Treyarch never really did zombies. That was... Uh, but this is I mean, sorry. Infinity Ward never really did zombies. That was Treyarch's thing. Um, Didn't the original... I don't remember if the original... No, MD. like, Infinite Warfare had something pseudo-zombies, uh, but I didn't play that one. But Treyarch always always did zombies. But anyway, so uh, pertaining to the, the Treyarch Infinity Ward every other year, at some point Activision decided that in order to increase the quality of their games, because people were, you know, sort of fading out of Call of Duty, they would insert in a third company called Sledgehammer, and that way games would have yeah, an, yeah. an extra year, or an extra two years, however that math works out, I don't want to think about it right now. Um, they'd have extra time to make a better game. And so that started with Call of Duty World War II, that was Sledgehammer's game. Um, and then Black Ops 4 came out, and then it'll be the Infinity Ward game. So it was supposed to be Sledgehammer again, um, this next game. Uh, but apparently, they aren't doing so hot in their development, so Activision is now rushing Treyarch to put their game out next year, effectively dismantling the whole system they tried to set up, and shooting themselves in the foot. Which... Well... The thing is, and this is this is a problem with corporate America in general, is it's all about short-term profits, and they know like, oh no, if we don't have a Modern Warfare one year, our profits will be cut into like a third or two thirds of what they usually are, and we can't have that because X and Y, and like, <gasps> and then like, oh, our stock will go down slightly, and and then that will cause our stock to go down even further, and it, it's just so much bullshit. Like, do you realize Apple? And this is completely separate, but just as an example, don't I don't want to talk about Apple, but every year that they do not see like a five percent increase in total revenue, people just freak the fuck out and like the stock just goes yeah. way down. And it's regardless, like it could be like three percent better. I also never really got why they like think that it has to increase. Like, why can't it just no, stay? It's stockholders. Just, it's, yeah. it's not Apple itself. It's stockholders. Yeah. And he, the, the fucked up thing is, if the stock goes down, that means the value of the company goes down, which means they have less money in the bank. Hmm. Um, it also means that they look bad as a company when compared to another company with more uh, total value, I guess. Or even... People compete like stock. These companies also compete over like the value of individual stock when that doesn't actually matter. It would be like saying, "All right, how many how many um, USD is in circulation right now? Do you know off the top of your head? I don't. But let's just say it's three hundred trillion. Let's say it's three hundred trillion, right? Um, a dollar is worth one tenth of a made up currency called." Uh, Ganark. So, a Ganark is worth ten dollars, but there's Holy only shit, got a triple. Sorry. there's only one billion uh, in total USD uh, in Ganarks available in total. So obviously, the United States has way more fucking money, but the value of Ganark is more, and that's more important. That's like what it. That's the crazy shit that I just don't get. Like they they value the expensiveness of their stock. Like it, it literally doesn't matter. You can do a two for split split any day, or you can like do a ten to one merger any day and like make your stock worth more or less. It doesn't matter. So it just confuses me. Yeah. If anything, you wouldn't want your stock to be worth more than say like fifty dollars at a time because then you could have more people buy your stock. Well, that's you, what they do. After, after, after it hits a certain value, they they split it. Usually, for but like, purpose. look at Am what's Amazon's value at right now? For well, Amazon doesn't have to give a fuck. That's what I mean, though. They, they're they literally in like a competition to have their stock, like per stock, be higher. I mean, I imagine some of that wild. is, some of that might just be status symbol. I mean, I don't really know. I yeah, don't. and it, it also comes down to like, do you like people are really competing to be the world's richest man or woman? Like, as if anyone gives a single fuck. Like I once mean, you, I feel like once you get to like ten billion, does it does it really matter? I don't think it matters. It, it's, it's it's literally just, like a high score in a fucking video game. That's exactly except, what I was gonna say. Is like they're playing the game, quote unquote, of corporate life. I guess that's how it is. I've heard Wall Street is like that. 
Like money isn't really. It's a it's a high so, score. That's yeah, literally what it comes a, down to. It's a it's a scoreboard. Yeah. Yeah, it's all some bullshit. Yeah, stick it to the man. But no, the thing is, like that high score comes at the cost of someone else not making that amount of money. Right. Like, not necessarily like, oh, you know, I. I'm not a, a socialist in the extent of like everyone deserves like a like a, a certain high wage. Like no, I think there should be a uh, prevailing wage of some amount. But the idea that like a universal basic income, but I don't think it should be that much. And people act like that, like wow, you know, that means everyone who's rich would now be poor, and it's like. That's not how it fucking works. Who thinks that, though? Oh, plenty of people. <clears throat> plenty of people think, like, a little bit of socialism is literally, like, full-on red communism. Like, we're gonna line people up and make sure that they have to, in order to get bread, have to get in the line and shit. Yeah, I mean, if we just made sure that the... <laughs> that everyone was paying appropriate taxes, uh, we could probably, you know... Do some shit that needs to be done around we the country. We could probably, uh, I don't know, if we just educate our fucking population some basic shit in a way that, because that's that's the problem right now, is education is done uh, not based on actual learning ability or the, uh, the, the drive to learn. The actual uh, purpose of education, as far as I'm concerned in the United States, is simply for tests. Oh, it is. And as soon as tests are done... I completely, I don't know about you guys, but I completely lost uh, all knowledge on the subjects. I still, I still maintained a lot. But, like, the, the fact that we didn't learn, like, economics in general is, is yeah. buckwild. Like, the amount yeah. of people that don't know how taxes work is insane. Like, the people that yeah, think, the, the people that think if your tax bracket goes up, you'll make less money is, <laughs> yeah, the, no. like, so yeah. many people think that, and it's fucking insane. There has insane. to be, do like, they? that has Who to be, like, oh, out with? my you guys God, have a really so bleak many people. outlook on life. And uh, it's especially funny when, when people think tax exemptions are like this magic put money in your pocket thing. Like, uh, like oh, I'll buy a new laptop and then write it off as a work expense so that I get it for free. It's like, well, no, you just you would just not pay the tax. Yeah, exactly. On that. So you, would you still like, yes, you still lose the seven hundred dollars for the laptop. You just don't owe the seven percent tax. You just don't pay tax. the seventy, yeah, or whatever. The, Who the fifty you know, dollars thinks tax. these things? Uh, most a, people. A lot of people. Honestly, most adults. A sad amount of people. I, you guys say most, but like I literally a mean tragic most. amount of people. Like I, I absolutely, without a doubt, like in my mind, most adults. Not, not like less adults. Not like, oh, 40 percent, well, maybe 40 percent adults, if you go on like a scale of like 40 percent believe this, 20 percent don't necessarily, but 40 percent are like correct in there. Yeah, I would say most adults. Have you, uh, have you seen the, the latest study on, uh, they asked Americans from ages like 20 to 65, um, if they think Arabic, uh, what is it called? Arabic numerals should be taught in school. <laughs> did, did you did you hear about this, Jonathan? I did not, but I feel like stuff like that. They do you know what an Arabic people. numeral is? I do. That's just our numbers. It sure is. Yeah. So that was like uh, ninety percent of all Republicans believe that Arabic numerals should not be allowed to be taught in school. Uh, it was like thirty percent of all Democrats. I don't know if, like, that, which I comes want, to a total of. I don't uh, believe that that was like completely kosher, like the study. Like you can go out on the street and ask somebody a question and they're nervous. And, and they they're ner no, this is shit. like a. Or you like can like really, phone. you can like really lead them to stuff. I mean, we, we, you're just assuming the study did that, though. Yeah, you're. I we guess. don't know for sure you're one way just or the other, that but it we'll, didn't. no is regardless of whether they led them or not, most people thought that Arabic numerals shouldn't be taught in school just because they had the word Arabic. I don't know, man. It just... I, I have way too much faith in humanity. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that... Um, you know, I, I think... 
there was another study that came out and this might make you feel better you are a rust though right now just in a different sense no it's not the same because if you're sharing that I'm telling accurate you. studies that's... yeah exactly and this is this is the big problem with society right now is there's so many lies that people literally don't even know what to believe so you just turn into an apathetic piece of shit shit oh well. And that's absolutely the problem right now is so many political apathy is at like a maximum high and it's fucked up because like that's not what we need right now. Uh, I, th I don't know. I think the problem isn't humanity though, it's our systems. If that makes sense? Yes, w which was created well, it's, by... It's who? both. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean... but I mean... It wasn't, it's, they're, they're outdated, I guess. People, yes, and people have too much pride over these systems to even change anything about them. I kind of don't think that. It's just the people in power obviously don't I want mean, to change I mean, it's not like these are new problems. We had the McCarthyism, like, the, people, like, just eating shit up without checking it exactly. for a second yeah. is not a new problem. No, absolutely not. But the, the thing is that it's an immediate, um, with, with Facebook, these problems have become immediate. As opposed to like, oh, you know, people hear about that and then maybe like they hear about it the day before an election, which is terrible. But I have to, I have to mute this guy. <laughs> yeah, but this anyway, is, we went to a a bleak, a bleak part of the end here. But anyway, I don't know. I I still definitely have faith in humanity. It's just a matter of a uh, just a matter of educating people, and hopefully at a young age, as opposed to when they're forty-five and refuse to believe that when their tax brackets go up that that only affects on. the amount of money that you've hit at that rank. Like, do you I know how tax no, brackets Literally, we can, we can find plenty of that. Jo Jonathan, you probably don't know how the tax brackets work. Yeah, it's if you're in the bracket, that money that's made in that percentile gets taxed that amount, and then any money made after that, it's like, I don't know what the tax brackets are, but let's say it's like 30,000 for the first one, and it's like 5% or something. Yep. I, so that 30,000 gets taxed that. Let's say you make 40,000. 30,000 gets taxed five, and then the, the 10,000 left over gets taxed the next bracket. Precisely. Yeah. But you Most know Most people that. don't know that. Most people, you're you're very fortunate that, that your, mother, your mother and father understand it. They didn't teach me that. Yeah, but they understand it. How do you know? I, I promise you they Your parents it. definitely... Yeah. Your mother works in insurance. She definitely understands it. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no doubt they understand it. But the, the, the problem is there's so many people who are, like, refusing to take, like, bonuses, refusing to take... Um, come like, on! Yeah, no, people literally... Come. This is a thing. But anyway, it's been an hour and a half. We should probably wrap up this one. Man, it's hard to, like, not go over. Well, so we don't care about going over. We just don't want to be less than an hour. Oh, I see. Yeah. But, really, we, but we also don't want to release like a five-hour episode. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, I mean, we can keep playing and keep probably. talking, but this, okay. this. No, no, be. just keep it, keep it recording. Or That's or true. Then you can recording. choose the best bits. Yeah, and then you can potentially I have, have a second. To do so episode. much. Do you remember editing? what time you started though? Well, it's I not that much. Obese, Honestly, you could send it to me. My OBS tells me it's been an hour and a half. Yeah. If you, so you can. Do you have a paper next to you? You could just mark good points. I could literally just like. I could, but like, fucking why? Alright, whatever, it's up to you. <laughs> also, the, the video on this is like, real rough. Like, my computer hasn't been handling the game especially well. Yeah, mine either. I think there's a bug with CSGO right I now. I don't really my think anybody's gonna horrible. care about our really shitty gameplay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, trust me, they don't care at all. If anything, they're just gonna watch it. <laughs> so wait, you, hold on, you guys wanna- <laughs> get offended. Uh, you guys wanna keep recording this one? Why not? Sure, yeah, go ahead. What if I cut it and start recording again? If you want. Yeah.